5. Now, I'm going to get down to a verse in a little bit, so uh, you bear with us this morning, and if I don't get to that verse, then, well, we'll just follow the Lord, and he'll, he'll bless us in what we do. Ephesians chapter number 5, we'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll, uh, then we'll go to the Scripture. Father, again, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Lord, I stand behind this desk, Lord, knowing, Father, that I'm nothing, but knowing God and realizing that you're everything. Lord, I can't do nothing without you. Father, I'm helpless and hopeless, God, without Jesus. And I pray the sweet Spirit of God would move upon us this morning and help us, God, that we'd rightly divide the word of truth. And God, help us to realize, God, the day that we live in. Lord, there's not much preaching left to be done, Father. I believe we're nearing the end of, of, this, of this age, God, and soon you're coming. But Lord, help us to be faithful. Lord, to stand and preach the word of God, Lord, till you come back. Bless now. Uh, those that have gathered together today, let us not leave here without having help from the Word of God. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 1. The Bible tells us this, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now what does uh, the book of uh, uh, 1 John say to us? It says that we are little children. Uh, we are little children. We are little Christ. We are little of followers of God. And the Bible says that we're to be followers of God as dear children. And it says that we are to, verse 2, and walk in love, be an imitator of God in love. Amen. Love those that are around you. Love the lost. Love your brothers and sisters in Christ. And friend, we see that. And the more we understand we're living in the last day, the more we know that we need God's help and God's people and I need the people of God. I don't find much encouragement out there in the world. I don't hear much. I, all I, uh, a lot of times all I see is sin and all I hear is sin. But I'm glad to get around the people of God in which I can have fellowship with and which I can gain strength with. And I'll say again to the church this morning, I love you. Amen. I don't say that near enough, but I love you and I appreciate your fellowship. I appreciate being able to come to the house of God and feeling the Spirit of God moving around here. Amen. I love the brethren. Amen. I'm glad to get around God's people. And it, and it works. Sometimes we find those that love the Lord and those that want to serve God. And it does me good to get around anyone that's safe. We should be imitators of the Lord. We should be imitators of the Father and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Amen. I know that I am loved by the Lord. I know that I am loved by Jesus. And I know that He loved me and He gave Himself for me. Amen. He gave Himself for you. If you're here, child of God, this morning, it's because that Jesus gave Himself for you. It's not because you came to church. It's not because your mom and daddy were Christian people. It wasn't because grandpa was a preacher. If you were saved by the grace of God, it's because that Christ gave himself for you and one day you asked Jesus into your heart, believed in him, had faith in him, had trust in him, and glory to God, he saved you by his grace. Amen. And so we are followers of him because he hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. All that He is is God, He gave to me. He gave Himself. All that He is as God, He gave that for me. And then all that He was as man, He gave that for me. Amen. He loves me. He loves you. And He gave Himself for us. Now I'm trying to paint a picture here today a little bit of what you and I are. We're a product, hallelujah, of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're saved by the wonderful, marvelous grace of God. We're going to heaven when we leave this world. No, no doubt about it, if you're a child of God, you're going to leave this world one of these days and go to heaven. Friend, what, hey, are y'all awake? Hey, Amen. You with me today? Hey, Amen. Listen, you're going to heaven when you leave this world. Hey, Amen. This world ain't got much for us. I'm just telling you. This world had. I, I was outside the other day, and I thought, Lord, how wicked this world is, God. How evil this world is, God. I heard a teenage boy cussing his mama outside the other day, and I stood and I thought, Under the Lord, oh my, where have we got? 
where a teenage boy will stand outside and cuss his mama. And that's what he did. He used profanity that I don't hear every day. And I thought unto the Lord, where have we gotten to in this society? This world ain't got much to offer, but I've got Jesus on the inside and heaven's my home. And one of these days I'm checking out of here by the rapture, by the grave. Amen. Well, preacher, are you excited about that? Hey, I'm just going to live as long as God lives. Amen. If you're saved, you're going to live as long as God exists. As long as God lives, you're going to be. And guess what? He's never, 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 never been anywhere. He's never, never, never going anywhere because He's God and He's eternal. Amen. So we see here that he, all that He is, He has given for us. Now, now, Paul says this and then he gives a list of things that this world is guilty of and he gives a list of things that carnal Christians may do if you don't stay close to the Lord and realize that Jesus gave himself for you. It says this, But fornication and all uncleanness of covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become of the saints. Don't be guilty of these sins is what Paul is saying here. Now I'm not going to get into all, the, all this, but, uh, but you know what it means? And just don't be guilty of those things as a believer. Or if you're lost, still don't be guilty of these things. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Now, does that mean that I have to be a... a I hope not. Hey, man, if I'm wrong, oh, my, I'm in bad shape. If I don't ever get to have a life and have good fun. But I don't want to ever take it to the place where that's all people see me as, as a jokester, amen. I don't want to ever take it to the place where people don't realize, amen, that I am what I am by the grace of God. And God puts some joy down in my heart. And it lets me laugh, amen. Sometimes it makes me cry. But the joy of Jesus in my heart, it gives me laughter and it gives me happiness and gives me great joy. Hallelujah, I'm glad I'm saved, amen. You ought to be the happiest person in the world this morning. You say, but preacher, I got problems on top of problems. Hey, join the crowd, amen. Join the crowd. Somebody said that to somebody one day, man, you don't know the problems I'm having. He said, look at me and go tell Noah about the flood. Amen. You look, hey, listen, I'm telling you, God's a good God. And no matter what you're going on in your life, you ought to be happy because your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. You're a child of the King. And glory to God, we're going to heaven one of these days. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient but rather giving thanks for this ye know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath an inheritance of the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Amen. What does that mean? That means to stay away from those that are partakers of what I just read. Hey, don't, hey listen. Child of God, be careful when you're around the worldly crowd. Now you can talk to them, you be nice to them. You tell them about the Lord if you get a chance. But don't you get buddy-buddy with the world because guess what? You ain't going to wear off on them, they're going to wear off on you. Very rarely have I ever seen it any different. But if you'll be, you can be a friend to someone and you know you can... Uh, you can uh, uh, not have a, uh, partake of their sins, and you can be a friend to someone, but just don't get so close, amen, that they start rubbing off on you, amen. And so that's what happens, and, and, and Paul's saying here, don't be partakers with them of their filthiness, of the evil of this world. Christian people, we ought to be cleaner than we've ever been clean. We ought to be closer than we've ever been close to Jesus. And we ought to let our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. For ye are sometimes darkness, but now are ye light. In the Lord walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit in, in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are, are, that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, <coughs> Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circums circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, 
redeeming the time because the days are evil. I want to preach to you just a little while. You have my introduction. I want to preach to you a little while on redeeming the time. Now, several times in Scripture is the word redeeming, the word redemption, the word redeem. Many times, go look it up and study it. You'll find most of it in the Old Testament talking about redemption. That means somebody paid a price. Amen. It means somebody paid a price. And so the definition of redemption is, is ransom in full or paid in full, and it's deliverance. And guess what it also means? It means that it's a riddance of sin. Hallelujah. Amen. When I was lost without God, I was sin covered. Amen. I was sin in my heart. I was sin on the inside. I was sin on the outside. I was black and filthy with sin. But when Jesus came along and I and I asked him to save me and he applied the red blood, hallelujah, of his of his sacrifice to my heart, guess what? I'm no longer I'm no longer covered with sin, but I'm rid of it. Amen. I have to deal with it every day. I sometimes commit sin and have to go back to the blood of Jesus and say, but guess what? I'm not bound by sin no longer. Hallelujah to God. I'm saved. My, the sin debt has been paid. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left its crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. And my friend today, I have been made rid of sin because of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. My sin debt has been paid. So I can say to you without a doubt this morning that I have been redeemed. How am I redeemed? Number one, I'm redeemed through His blood. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 7 tells us that we're redeemed by the blood. Amen. And we're redeemed by, by, by Him, by His sufferings on the cross of Calvary. Jesus wasn't just didn't just die, but He suffered to pay my sin debt. Those Old Testament sacrifices, they suffered because they were, they were, uh, their, their throats were slid and the blood was shed and their body was taken apart that they might, that they might be sacrificed for you and I. Those Old Testament sacrifices point toward Jesus, the Lamb of God. Listen, he suffered and he was beaten beyond recognition. He, his redemption was through his blood and his sufferings and his death. Now as Christ died on the cross, His blood was shed, and that blood was presented before the Father, and the Father says that's a good sacrifice. It was acceptable to the Father, and I am redeemed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am redeemed through His blood, and it is for my sins. It is for my unpayable sin debt. Now, friend, I don't know what condition you are, saved or lost today, but let me tell you something. If you're saved, you had an unpayable debt. If you're lost, you've got an unpayable debt. There's no way that you can ever pay the debt, the sin of debt that is upon you. The debt of sin that is in you and on you, no matter how good you live, you'll never get close, amen, to paying that sin debt. I owed a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt that I couldn't, that, you know, that he did not owe. Why? Because he was, so he could wash my sins away, amen, by his blood. So if you're under a sin debt this morning, you'll never pay it off. What you'll do is you may try your best the rest of your life, but you'll die lost without God and go to a devil's hell because you've never trusted Jesus and you'll die. The wages of sin is death. And that's what a man does if he doesn't accept Jesus. He dies under that sin debt and his wages is death and death in hell and death in the lake of fire. My friend, I'm glad that Jesus paid my sin debt. He paid for my sins, the unpayable debt. I was bankrupt, amen. I was bankrupt without any hope. But this man named Jesus, he redeemed me through his blood. Then number two, because of redemption, I am redeemed. I am, a, I am redeemed from all iniquity, past, present, and future. You say, does that mean you never sinned? No, I was a sinner before I got saved. The thing that's different now is I'm still a sinner, but I'm saved by the grace of God. Amen. And when I sin, I have a way. I, hey, I've got an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the righteous. And when I sin, I go to Him because He said in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just. 
to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when I sin, I go to Jesus and I go to Him and say, Lord, will you? I had to do it this morning. Hey, Amen. I had to get before God down in my study this morning. Say, Lord, clean me up. God, make me fit today and forgive me of my sin. Guess what? He did. Why? Because I have the blood of Jesus, amen, flowing through me. Amen. I'm saved by Jesus, by the Lord Jesus Christ. So I am redeemed. And because of, of that redemption, because of Him, I am redeemed from all iniquity. What about my future sins that I'm going to do later because I know it's going to happen? You say, preacher, I'm not going to sin. Well, amen, you're going to die then. Amen. When sin ceases is when you leave this world. Amen. Because you're going to be tempted and sometimes you're going to yield to that temptation. But when you do, if you're a child of God, don't let it go till the night time. Amen. The moment you know that the Spirit of God has dealt with you, then right then say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. I'm sorry, God, forgive me. Guess what? He will. So when he, just prepare for it and get ready. I don't want to mess up. But I know I'm going to because of this old flesh. And when I do, God help me, Lord, to... Bow and ask for forgiveness. Because of redemption, I am redeemed from all iniquity. I am redeemed from the law. Amen. I'm not no longer under the law. Christ fulfilled the law when he came and paid my sin debt. There was a Jewish man that, that I was acquainted with and had some friends that were well acquainted with him. And one of, one of the friends came and told me one day, he said, the Jewish man said that he had read the law and he said no man can keep that and he was a Jew he knew the he knew the scripture uh, you know in the, in the Hebrew and the Greek and all of that he knew that and he read he said no man can keep that hey man but one man did hallelujah the Lord Jesus Christ was perfect without spot and without blemish he fulfilled the law every jot and every tittle he did it for you and I because I'm redeemed I'm redeemed from the law and I'm redeemed from one's hands that is stronger than I am. And I'm talking about the devil. Amen. Listen, the devil can't get you. You're saved. You have the, you have the blood of Jesus. The devil can't get you no more. But he sure can try to make your life miserable. He sure can try to make you forget that you're saved. He can sure try to make you feel that you don't even know the Lord. But I'm telling you, when faith, amen, when faith kicks in, you'll know the day and the hour that you have trusted Christ. And you'll understand, amen, no matter how I feel, I'm saved. My Jesus, my redemption is stronger than that one that, that is stronger than I am. It's greater than the devil, amen, that, that sometimes comes around and gets me to feeling icky on the outside but making me feel slimy all around me because the devil is so trying to oppress me. I tell you what, friend, I'm glad for the blood of Jesus. I'm glad for His blood that cleanses from all sin. And I'm glad for His blood that is stronger than that of the devil. And if the devil gets on your shoulder and begins his lying ways, which, hey, I can think of nothing better to call the devil than the devil. Amen? He's called Satan. He's called... Uh, the worker, uh, you know, he's called the, the worker of iniquity. He's called many things. But I can't think of anything better, amen, than the devil because that's what he is, a devil. And when the devil starts deviling you, when he starts lying to you, when he starts telling you all kinds of evil, say, listen, old devil, I remember one day I was lost without God, but I remember somebody telling me about the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all sin. And I'm going to sing you a song, old devil. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, he has to flee. Why? Because he cannot handle the blood of Christ. Amen. Moving along this morning, number three. Because I, because I am redeemed, I should redeem the time. Amen. The Bible says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now we get to the message. Amen. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming means to rescue from loss. Amen. We've lost a lot of time as believers. I waste a lot of time as a believer. Amen. And God began to deal with my heart about some ways that I waste time as a believer. You don't have time, friend. we got 24 hours in the day. Everybody here. 
and yet we've got less time than we've ever had before. We've got it easier than we've ever had as far as cooking and cleaning and all of that. Amen. I remember my mama used to wash clothes, and I'm not going to say out on the washboard. Amen. She didn't. She did when she was little, but when I come along, she had an old ringer washer, and we, sh we had a solar clothes dryer. Amen. Y'all know what a solar clothes dryer? If you don't, I'll sell you one for $100. Amen. Anybody wants one? I've got them on sale this week for $100. If you want to so don't cost a thing. Amen. It costs no electricity. Man, for, it'll save you a, a power bill. Amen. Till, till, you, till you quit washing clothes. Amen. And I'll sell you one for $100. If you believe that, amen, see me after the service. I've got it for you. You know what a solar clothes dryer is? Some people don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a, a post here and a post here and a wire hanging across it. Amen. A bunch of clothes pins. You put it out there in the sun. That's a solar clothes dryer. Amen. Believe me, I have seen them for sale. And I know that's what they were. I didn't buy one. I had better sense. But I want to tell you something. But now you take your clothes out of the washer and sometimes you don't go nowhere but right there and you throw them in the dryer and you've got a dryer and you don't have to do that. My mama washed clothes with a, and hung them on the, on the line in the solar. If it, listen, we, clothes got kind of slim if it had been rainy like it is now. One of them summers and clothes got kind of slim. You found them laying all over the house, over every chair. Over every banister, hanging from the... No, we didn't have ceiling fans, but they would have been if we'd had them. And we had those things. Mama washed clothes in a... And now she's got enough, but she had a ringer washer. Anybody remember a ringer washer? You put, as a kid, I was amazed by that thing. I'd stand there and watch it. She never put the lid on it. It just sloshed out. And I'd sit there and watch it, and it'd do this, and it'd do that, and then it'd spin around. And, and when it got through doing all that, Mama would take them out of there after she rinsed them off, and she'd put them through that, she'd put them through that ringer, and on the other side, she'd be handing them out. She'd shake them out, put them in the basket, ready to go to the solar clothes dryer. I had the bright idea one time that I thought, well, I bet you my hand to fit in there. And guess what I did? I stuck my finger in there. And guess what it did? It stopped at my elbow. It couldn't go no farther. And this little old boy was in pain. Amen. It didn't break nothing. But I think, I don't think I ever did that again. Knowing me, I might have. But, I, but listen, I learned one thing real quick. You don't do that. Amen. Oh, but we've got all the conveniences of the world. We can go put something in the microwave and zap it in a few minutes. It's hot. Not as good, but it's hot. Amen. All the conveniences that we've got. And listen, I keep myself coming back to, to a place where I still chop my firewood. Amen. Heat my house by my firewood. I ain't going to forget that part. Amen. I want my grandkids to, to know that, that, their dad, that their Papa heated his house with firewood. Hey, I'll keep that tradition going till I can't do it no more. But we've got all the condition, all the, all the things of the world that make... But, we got, but who's got enough time? Who's got enough time? Nobody has. Well, I just ain't got time. I just ain't got time. Why? Because we're not redeeming the time that we've got. It's why we don't have enough time. God help me to redeem the time. Seemed like my grandma and grandpa always had enough time and yet uh, grandpa would get out and he'd work from daylight to dark sometimes it seemed like, but it seemed like he always had time of evening to sit around on the porch. Amen. That's what we ain't, that's what we got away from. We don't sit around on the porch. Nobody's got a porch no more much. And we don't go to the neighbors and say, you say, preacher, them days are never coming back. They might not. But you listen, what time you've got, we need to redeem it because the days are evil. And that's what the Bible says, that we are, we should... We should uh, redeem our time because of the, the, the days that are evil around us. How much time do I waste? Now, I'm meddling. I'll just tell you right quick. I'm going to meddle here just a little bit. I'm preaching, but I'm still meddling because I've done had to deal with this. How much, how much time do we waste on the boob tube? The one-eyed monster. The television for y'all that hadn't caught on yet. How much time do we waste sitting in front of that television? Oh, Lord, help us. I ain't hearing an amen of one now because I know I'm hitting on something that I'm guilty of too. Amen. God, help us if we'd redeem that time. You know what you had to do last week when you read those books of the Bible? You had to redeem some time to do it. Amen. You say, but I read my Bible every day. That was extra. Amen. And you had to redeem some time to do that. And what a blessing it was to redeem that time. Hey, hey, you computer lovers like I am, how much time do we spend on Facebook? Raise your hand. No, don't do it. I don't want to embarrass everybody in the church. But hey, man, a lot of people, let's get up and check Facebook. Go to work and check Facebook. 
And I've, I have weaned myself off of that pretty much. And if you don't believe me, go back and look at some of my past posts and then notice them now. I'm, I'm, I'm rare on that. Hey Amen. I just don't do it as much anymore. I don't have time. But listen, the, and I'm not, all that ain't bad. I'm not saying it's bad. But listen, none of that should ever take the place of us in our relationship with the Lord. People say, I ain't got time to pray. Boy, we're way too busy if we ain't got time for that. God help me. I ain't got time to read the Word. We're way too busy if we ain't got time for that. Redeeming the time because you're living in evil days. It's wicked out there, friend. It's wicked out there. Just, just look. Open your eyes. <coughs> Open your eyes and see the wickedness of the world around you. And we should redeem the time and take the time that we waste on worldly pleasure. Some's okay. Amen. I ain't got a thing against going fishing, going hunting. Amen. But listen, that should never take the better part of me. Amen. I know people that get so tied up in one thing, it's all they ever do. Some people, it's automobile racing. I ain't got nothing, I ain't got nothing against auto racing. I don't. You know, particularly care for it, but it ain't. I don't care. But listen, I never, I never let that come between me and God. Amen. Listen, don't let things of this world come between you and the Lord because it's taking more of your time than you're giving to the Lord. Look what He did for you. He died on the cross of Calvary. Surely, in this life, we can we can redeem the time because uh, because the times are evil. And then, listen, we we find all kinds of things that we can redeem our time from. I don't have to go into the details, but you think about what somebody's sitting here thinking right now. Well, I do waste too much time on this, and I don't know what you're thinking about. I ain't that smart. But listen, somebody's saying, boy, I do spend a lot of time doing this. I, I should take a little bit of that time spending on serving the Lord and reading my Bible and studying and praying. I'll tell you what the reward is. The reward for all of that is happiness and joy in your heart. How many of you play Facebook games? I, I was going to ask you that. I'm the only one in here that plays a Facebook game. I know better than that. Right? Why, if you raise your hand, I know better than that. But some of you pay, play Facebook games. You play Angry Birds. Boy, that's addictive. You play Words with Friends. That's a little bit educational. But if you do any of that kind of stuff, listen, if it gets between you and the Lord, hey amen, it's gotten way too big for you and way too big for me. We redeem the time because the days are evil. Some people spend their time making money. Listen, the more you got, the more you're going to spend. Be content with such things as you have. Amen. Let God take it. And I'm not got a thing against people making money. You're, if you're paying your tithe, I hope you become a millionaire. Amen. Amen. I don't say much about money, but I'll tell you something. The greatest blessing... One of the greatest blessings that I have is, is being able to pay my 10% to the church. Amen. It gets it. The church gets it before I get it. Amen. All of it. They get it before I get it. And uh, you'd ask Sister Ann about that, and she'd make sure that the church gets it. Amen. But oh, I'll tell you something. That's one of the biggest blessings in my life. Is You say, preacher, I, how, oh, I don't know how I got here, but let me just go ahead and say a few things right here. I don't know how in the world I could ever pay 10% to the church when I'm barely making ends meet. I'll tell you something. A man from experience is going to tell you I faced some of the hardest financial times in my life. But guess what? I've got through them because I've never, I've never cheated God. I've never robbed God. It, well, I haven't in the, since I learned the lesson. I did before I learned the lesson. But now God gets His first. Amen. And guess what? God takes care of me. Amen. And He will. But preacher, I just can't do it. Amen. Well, just don't go ahead. Don't do it. And you wallow around out there in misery. But you'll learn one of these days, amen, that it's all right to pay your tithe and it'll do you good to pay your tithe. That's probably all you'll hear me say about money for a long time because you know I don't do that much. But I'll just tell you, we redeem the time and we and sometimes people make money and try to make money and do all they can to make money and take that away from God. And again, I've not got nothing wrong with making money as long as it don't take you away from the Lord. If you're too busy, you're too busy. And I say right here to you, what is the cause, the cause of redeeming our time? The cause of our redeeming our time is because of what Christ did for you and I. 
what Christ did for you and me. That's our cause, friend. Is there not a cause? The cause is of what Christ has did for you and I. You think about what, what Christ did for you. Make you want to redeem the time and give all you can to God. Lord, help me. And I preached this message about 2 o'clock this morning to myself before you ever got it. You said, what are you doing up at 2 o'clock in the morning? Well, I took a nap yesterday evening and I couldn't sleep, so I just I done, done some more studying. And the Lord hit me with that. Oh, my. God helped me to redeem the time because of the cause of Christ that he died for me. And Lord helped me to redeem my time because there's a crown to win. There's a reward at the end of this way for those that faithfully serve the Lord. And I want to win a crown. Amen. I want to get I want to have something to give back to the Lord for dying on the cross of Calvary for me. Do you know the Lord this morning? Are you saved? Are you redeeming your time? Or is the world getting you time? If the world gets you time, friend, you're not, you're, you're not going to be as close to the Lord as you want to be, and I'm not either. God, help me to redeem the time for the days are evil. Father, we bless you, Lord, this morning. God, for your good grace. Lord, we thank you for the word of God. Help me, Lord, to redeem the time because the days are evil. And Lord, help me to do all that I can for your glory. And God, help me, Lord, that I would walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. God, help me when I have opportunity, God, that I'd read more of the Word of God. Lord, I'd pray more, and God, that I'd seek your face, God, and study, Lord, thy Word more. Help me, I pray. Bless us now as we go our way today in Jesus' name.